Hello and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. What explains Bitcoin? Why does it exist and why is really nothing worth $70,000 a piece? Moreover, there are millions of owners of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, and yet few real transactions take place, relatively speaking. How does all this relate to the coming of the BRICS currency, the reserve status of the petrodollar, and even the war on cash? Well, my real purpose here today is to talk about Gresham's Law one of the most ancient and impactful principles of modern human society. Now, it hasn't been taught in college classrooms much, maybe really since the socialist takeover of American education and government about a century ago. But it is one of the most impactful determinants of socioeconomic events, global geopolitics, and the book of history. I'll get to both its ancientness of this law and how it applies to Bitcoin and and resolve some of those puzzles. But first, the law itself. Gresham's law goes by the adage, bad money drives out good money, with an anti-capitalist ring to it that competition somehow drives out good money and promotes the use of bad money implying a kind of race to the bottom as a result of capitalist uh, capitalism and competition. But nothing could be further from the truth. It really only applies to government control of our money. It typically applies where both good money, such as gold, has to compete with poor money, such as paper, and a level playing field where merchants are required to accept both at the same price for their products. Here are some examples in ascending order of government incompetence and wickedness. One, where silver dollars that are all worn out and lightweight drive out brand new silver dollars from circulation so that we only end up with dingy underweight money in circulation. Two, government taxes us in full weight coinage, but then shaves the edges of coins in order to make extra but lighter weight coins uh, in the future for them to spend. This was a favorite government trick before the printing press, which resulted in smaller and lighter weight coins over time. In fact, the rough or ridged edge of a modern quarter was the attempt on the part of governments to demonstrate the quality of government coins, that they were not indeed being shaved by either governments or professional counterfeiters. Three, uh, governments down through history have debased coinage and led to the downfall of great empires, such as Rome. Uh, Here, they would add cheap base metals to the gold and silver coins and drive out the good full weight gold and silver coins, leaving only the bad or watered down coins in circulation. The U.S. did this in 1965, driving all of the silver coins out of circulation. Four, President Franklin Roosevelt drove all gold coins out of circulation in 1933 by raising the price of gold from $20 to $35 an ounce and making gold ownership illegal for Americans. Five, with nothing but inflationary paper money to use, Americans have taken all the copper pennies out of circulation. Those copper pennies have three cents worth of copper in them, and they've all been withdrawn from circulation. Even the current copper-clad zinc uh, pennies and the copper nickel nickels are flowing out of circulation, too, because the metal is worth more than the coins. Six, this also applies to good versus bad fiat currencies. 
before the euro, Greeks and Italians would prefer to hold German marks and to spend their highly inflationary local currencies, the drachma and the lira, uh, people in third world countries today prefer to hold U.S. dollars and to spend their highly or higher inflationary local currencies. So what does this have to do with Bitcoin and Gresham's Law? In a world of inflationary fiat paper currencies, people have gravitated to the U.S. dollar and the euro. People save whatever the regional currency is that is most stable and spend the depreciating ones in accordance with Gresham's Law. And this is where Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies come in. Not only was the world awash with government paper money, but even the best of the trash, such as the U.S. dollar, was guaranteed by its central bank, the Federal Reserve, to depreciate by at least 2% target. Then, when the financial crisis and massive banking bailouts ensued during the Fed's great financial crisis, that followed their great housing bubble, Bitcoin and crypto money were invented and introduced. It's all been an enormous success that has swept the world economy and is worth trillions of dollars. And the success is due to Gresham's Law. Its success as a new competing money is based on the fact that it is produced in the free market, similar to gold and silver. It is expensive to mine, and the mining gets more difficult over time, just like gold mining on the gold standard. This has made this money more valuable over time and has attracted an ever-widening worldwide market to Bitcoin particularly amongst the younger and more intelligent population. People complain that Bitcoin is not real money. But then again, the U.S. dollar and the euro are not real money either. They are a fallacious money substitute mandated by government that can basically be produced with abandon not something that's produced in the marketplace. People also complain that Bitcoin is not used like money in day-to-day -day transactions, but is more like an investment and used in investment transfers internationally. However, this critique ignores Gresham's law. Naturally, people are not spending their cryptocurrencies when they're going up in value. They prefer to hold them rather than to spend them. They spend the inflationary monies first. This is Gresham's law. Now, longer term, Bitcoin is in for a battle with the U.S. dollar. Countries have fought wars over monetary battles to hold on to what economist Barry Eichengreen called the United States' exorbitant privilege of basically printing money that others have to hold and have to use. Right now, gold is on the forefront in this battle with the U.S. dollar, but in the future, cryptocurrencies, probably uh, denominated in terms of gold and silver, will wage an epic battle against government and their paper money. And for the sake of humanity, let us all hope bad money loses and that Le Leviathan government is destroyed forever. Now, good old Gresham himself lived in the early 1500s, but this monetary law was recognized going back to the times of the Greeks and the Romans. And the great Copernicus himself recognized and explained the law before and probably better than Gresham himself. The timelessness and power of this law tells me that good money is a good bet in our future.